Uh, coming up, our nation seems divided right now, certainly, maybe more deeply than ever in some view. What does this mean for young leaders in both parties? This month, producer Sergis Davis sat down with a young Republican and a young Democrat. They talked about what drew each of them to politics and what makes them hopeful about the future. First, we hear from Samuel Ledoux and then Danila Crespin Zadovsky. Samuel Ledoux, thanks for stopping by this week. Oh, thank you for having me. First, I want you to describe to us, where do you stand politically? How do you describe yourself as a Republican to others? Well, I'm a Main Street, reform-minded Republican. I'm very similar to John McCain and uh, Lindsey Graham type of Republican. You worked for John McCain last year. What drew you to his campaign, the issues he was talking about? Well, I've always admired John McCain. I think he's a very powerful voice in the Senate. Um, I think especially on foreign policy, a senator like him is needed now more than ever with Crimea being invaded by Russia and the recent hackings. I don't think there's anyone as knowledgeable as John McCain in the Senate to tackle these issues. What about issues we're dealing with here in New Mexico? Where Does he speak to some of those things regionally as well for us? Well, I know that John McCain really focused on Native Americans during the campaign and trying to help them with a lot of their pressing issues such as water that uh, we also deal with here in New Mexico and that also you know really inspired me I remember one time I was walking on the parade with John McCain at the Navajo Nation and we had John McCain and the code talkers and we were walking the parade and that was one of my favorite aspects of the campaign what did you take away from that experience did it change how you see politics well I used to be a a bit further to the right than Mr. M the Senator McCain, but um, as I got more involved with his campaign, I actually started agreeing with him on more and more things, and I'm, I think it's safe to say I'm pretty similar to him now. You also worked on Governor Martinez's re-election campaign as well. That's correct. What did you learn from that experience? Well, Governor Martinez is one of the people who actually got me involved in politics to begin with. I really was impressed with her and her staff in the 2010 campaign. Um, some of her staff actually went down to my high school and uh, spoke to us on political day. And She was one of the only Republicans there that had staff there and uh, we heard from the staff and I was really inspired, it actually inspired me to go and register to vote and I registered as a Republican so I could vote for her in the primary. And then, you know, it culminated in actually casting the votes with her at the convention at the RNC in 2016. Do you come from a family of Republicans? Uh, I come from a family of mixed. It's about half Republican, half Democrat. And you grew up in northern New Mexico? Yes, I grew up in Española and uh, right now I'm living in Nambe. You wrote a column for the online news site and in politics.net about the need for people of different political views to come together after the November election. What's the message you want to send to people right now? Well, I think people need to just talk to each other. A lot of the misunderstandings, I think, that come from politics is the fact that none of us really talk to each other anymore, and social media has allowed us to kind of surround ourselves in our own political circles with people who think exactly like us. And I've caught myself doing this too, where I only follow Republicans that kind of think like me. I kind of unfollow liberal people. We all get stuck in this trap where we just want to hear exactly what we think. And I think it's uh, dangerous to democracy a little bit because without knowing things about the other side, we uh, tend to basically dehumanize them. And when the elections come, you often see, you know, very strong reactions if you lose. And I saw this on my side in 2012. I worked really hard on the Romney campaign, and I was devastated when he lost. And I know where a lot of these people are coming from, with that, uh, you know, how they feel when, they, when Donald Trump won. And, you know, it's been a big deal. We've had Democratic, a Democrat in the president's seat for eight years. So it's going to be a radical change that a lot of them are not used to. And, uh, you know, I understand where they're coming from. And I also remember when Glenn Beck and all these people on TV were talking like it was the end of the world when Obama was elected. And that's just not the case. And they should understand that with Trump, that's also not the case. So are you reaching out to some folks in your community or your family who have different political views? Yes, I am. And I'm also reaching out to my fellow Republicans to try to uh, calm down. Unfortunately, a lot of them have, you know, started bragging about how, uh, how they were beat the other side. And, you know, right now we have complete control of the government. It's time for us to basically, you know, understand that people are hurting. and We're going to be criticized. So we should 
come together and try our best to lead the nation for all Americans. We're no, we're no longer the opposition party. There's also a lot of division here in New Mexico between Democrats and Republicans. Do you think that you can take that message locally to folks on both sides of the aisle in the legislature? Is that something you're also thinking about? Well, I think it's something that needs to be done. Uh, and I think that, uh, unfortunately, the divisions nationally have trickled down locally. And uh, I think Governor Martinez has tried her absolute best to try to uh, compromise with Democrats. But unfortunately, uh, that has not been reciprocated on their side. And uh, Santa Fe is looking a lot more like Washington. You've had several different leadership roles in the Republican Party here in New Mexico and the Young Republicans. Uh, what do you see ahead for yourself? Are you hopeful with where the party's headed? I am hopeful. I think that, uh, you know, the party has always had a lot of divisions in it. Uh, we've kind of, we're the big tent, so we have to incorporate a lot of differing opinions on things. A lot of people don't agree with me, for instance. And uh, I think now that we're in charge, we can use the diversity of ideas within our party to strengthen the country to show that there is a spectrum of different political beliefs. Um, I don't feel like the Democrats have that much of a diversity within their party. So I think that now that we're in charge, we can compromise and go with each other on things and reach over to the other side of the aisle. I think uh, the diversity of the Republican Party was what led it to to basically take almost all of middle America. If you looked at the election breakdown, you know, it looks like the Democrats only control the coasts. And, you know, there's this huge country in between. I mean, if you're in New York and you wanted to travel to the next place that's a Clinton voting place, you pretty much have to go all the way to either San Francisco or Chicago. Do you think uh, Democrats in New Mexico also need to reach out to rural communities? You grew up in a rural community yourself? I definitely think that both parties actually need to reach out to rural communities, especially in the North. Um, the, the pressing issue of the heroin epidemic that has just struck New Mexico hard. And uh, unfortunately, it's not getting as much press as places like Ohio and New Hampshire. A lot of that has to do with the fact that it's been a problem for such a long time. But if you saw the CDC, heroin overdoses have passed gun homicides and they're passing uh, regular opiates. And it's just becoming more of a pressing issue. And unfortunately, we've kind of become desensitized to it, especially in Española. Um, I remember posting something on Facebook about it and a lot of people getting angry and saying that it's not that bad. And if you look at a map of how bad the overdoses are, we're the worst in the nation. You're a young Republican here in New Mexico. What are the issues that are most important to you that you want to hear people in leadership roles right now talking about in 2017? I do think the heroin epidemic is something I'm really, I really want someone to talk about. I mean, it's just been almost radio silence. You hear about it once a year on major news networks and maybe an article in the paper. But unfortunately, you know, people either see it as a toxic issue or something they don't want to talk about. I also want to see major infrastructure reform. I think now that the Democrats are in charge of the, of the House and the Senate, this is something they always bring up, but when it comes for them to actually put out a plan, there's never really a plan. They want to focus, like a lot of the bills being filed right now focus on election issues, such as, uh, you know, trying to make people release tax, tax forms. And I know we don't have any money, uh, so that makes things really difficult for infrastructure, of course. But, uh, I mean, there's no way we're going to get, you know, new businesses in the state without, you know, faster internet, better roads. These are things that bring businesses to the state. And I also like to see more business-friendly ideas. And uh, now that Democrats are in charge, a lot of them like uh, Uber, and they like a lot of the Silicon Valley type reforms that are coming. And I think they should be reaching out. That's something that Republicans can agree with them on. You know, pro-business stuff, especially with things like Uber. We need to try to pave a future for New Mexico, especially here in Albuquerque, that could use these resources. Samuel, nice to speak with you. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on politics right now in New Mexico and nationally. All right, well, thank you. Daniela Crespin-Zadowski, thanks for sitting down with me this week. Thank you so much for having me. 
First, can you start us off with where do you stand politically? How do you explain your politics to other people? Sure. Um, I would definitely say that I'm a progressive woman. Um, the values that I hold close um, have to do with really enacting and crafting strong policy um, that's going to positively affect New Mexican families. And I think you can do that in a few different ways, um, one of which is um, attracting s strong jobs that will positively affect New Mexicans. You know, somebody can go to work and at the end of the day feel good about the day that they just put in, um, have strong um, uh, workers' rights that will help to guarantee that they have um, sick leave and their families are taken care of. Um, also in ensuring that there's high quality early childhood and K through 12 education for every New Mexican. Um, and that also includes home visiting access, child care, high quality child care, and access to our state pre-K program. And lastly, um, health care access for every New Mexican. And you know, I think that the values uh, that the Democratic Party holds close are certainly the ones that I hold close to my heart. Um, there's so much that we have to be grateful for um, after November. And I know that November 8th was very difficult for Democrats across the state, but I think the shining light was that on November 9th, Democratic New Mexicans woke up in a blue state. We won our House of Representatives back. We expanded our majority in the Senate, and we were able to elect a strong and capable leader in Maggie Toulouse Oliver as our Secretary of State. So I think that the values that New Mexicans hold close were shown on, on how we came out in November. Um, and not only in support of Secretary Clinton, but really in opposition of Donald Trump's rhetoric and, um, and what he was saying about the people across this country that um, a great deal of which make up New Mexico. And so I'm proud of the way that we came out um, in support of, of New Mexicans. You were involved in Secretary Clinton's campaign. You were a fellow in the campaign. Yeah. Why was that important to you? Well, you know, I got a call from a mentor of mine in Santa Fe, and she had called me and asked me if I would be interested in applying for the fellowship program. And my first reaction was absolutely not. I have so much on my plate. I, you know, with my job, and uh, I was doing some freelance writing at the time, and I'm a, I was, I'm a mom and a wife, and I had all these excuses. And then I really stopped and paused and thought about what that campaign meant to my family and what it meant to um, myself and um, my circle of friends and really what it meant to my young daughter. And I knew and I felt a, a great sense of obligation to get involved in any way that I could. So what I did was um, I built events really geared towards millennials and young voters. Um, and so we did house parties at young professional homes and uh, we had a Parents for Hillary event at a local restaurant. We filled the back patio of a, um, a pizzeria in Santa Fe called Back Road Pizza. Uh, and every day I got to meet inspiring people, really thoughtful and, and engaged Santa Feans, um, who just continued to inspire me to stay connected. And I'm, I'm so thankful that I took that call and that I said yes. Um, it was a wonderful opportunity. And um, I'm really excited because the majority of Santa Feans that helped out with that initiative are now helping out um, with Mayor Javier Gonzalez's Pre-K for Santa Fe initiative. And I think we're gonna see this throughout the country as local leaders stepping up and saying, even no matter what's happening in Washington, we're still gonna do right by our citizens. And so Mayor Gonzalez is making right on a promise that he made during his campaign, um, expanding Pre-K for every three and four year old in Santa Fe. So that's about a thousand three and four year olds. Um, and so, we know the return on investment, we know the great benefits that are associated with early childhood education. So increased graduation rates, decreased rates of um, unnecessary special education placement, um, uh, decreased rates of incarceration. And so uh, while I think that those reasons are more than enough uh, rationale for implementing this initiative, um, the even better part, not even the better part, but another wonderful part of the program is that we will pay for the initiative um, by attacking another public health crisis, uh, and that's really the access to sugary sweetened beverages for children. 
Now, staying on Unclinton for a moment, you also wrote about your experiences, your thoughts on politics for the Huffington Post, so you were engaged at the national level. Did that change how you see national politics? Sure, you know, I think Secretary Clinton's campaign was just such an eye-opener um, in positive and negative ways. You know, I think that we were also able to see the um, the issues that we are facing in America with regards to gender discri discrimination and, and, and race relations. And so um, certainly that was eye-opening in, in my, from my own perspective as a woman of color. And so um, I, was, uh, I was happy to see the work that was being done in New Mexico and the values that New Mexicans hold close and how local leaders are trying to, to change some of those issues here locally. Um, but certainly from a national perspective, um, I think those issues are something that we'll continue to tackle. And back here in New Mexico, as many states, there's a lot of talk about um, the states and the country being very divided. Do you see yourself reaching out to folks, um, Republicans, to try to find common ground this year? Sure, absolutely. You know, after the election, I got a lot of calls um, saying, you know, good effort to you and your team, and how can I get involved? And I think that that's a wonderful opportunity for us to work together, to stay unified. Um, there are, you know, Secretary Clinton won the popular vote by more than three million votes. And so uh, I think that there are people across the country who feel upset and um, are also wanting to find a way to channel that energy um, into something good. And there's so many opportunities now um, to really do something. The first and foremost is to vote at every possible um, opportunity that you're given. We have school board elections coming up February 7th, so um, really uh, focusing on um, getting good, strong candidates uh, for that election. Uh, we have a mayoral race in Albuquerque this year, gubernatorial race next year, lots of races, lots of opportunities for people to get involved. Um, also, if people can think just for a moment about an issue that's really important to them, whether it's education or the environment or reproductive rights, and then to find an organization that um, that they think is doing right in that in those issues. Um, you can try to volunteer, whether it's data entry or get on their board of directors, donate money if you if you're able to do that. Um, and lastly, just another idea is to write letters letters to the editor to your local publication. Um, if they are able to publish it, then to share it on your social media um, network. Uh, there's lots of ways for people to stay engaged. What makes you hopeful about what's ahead? <laughs> well, I live in Santa Fe now. I'm born and raised in Albuquerque, and so being in Santa Fe has just been uh, a wonderful um, opportunity to really tap into um, local politics and to stay engaged with a community, I think, that is incredibly engaged, incredibly thoughtful, and like I said, is really excited about Pre-K for Santa Fe, is excited about um, pushing initiatives that will support local families, and um, just doing right by, by the citizens of New Mexico. And what's next for you? <laughs> um, so I uh, will always continue to focus on early childhood education. My work with the United Way of Santa Fe County will we'll try to continue expanding um, both programming and funding for all early childhood education. Um, I'll be working with Pre-K for Santa Fe in, in Santa Fe and continue writing um, for Huffington Post and a few other um, uh, publications. What's it like to get your voice out from New Mexico? Do you find some people are surprised to hear from someone from our state? I had a couple of people ask or tell me that I wrote in English very well. So, you know, that's always fun. Um, but really, it's I love this state. This is my hometown. Uh, I'm excited to talk about it and give a perspective. Um, maybe that's a little bit different from other perspectives that other New Mexicans have given. Daniela, thank you so much for joining us to talk about your take on politics, where we stand today nationally and locally. Great. Thanks so much.